Welcome back to the next episode of Meet the Pros. Today we're meeting with Sam Mountain. She's the owner of Monkey Business Dog Training, uh, which services the West Island doing and its surrounding areas doing private lessons and group lessons. And Sam today is going to share with us uh, two tips on how to help make your dog more consistent with his behavior. Sam, thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, I, I definitely, I don't own a dog, but I know plenty of people who do. And I know there's a frustration uh, when you're, you know, just trying to get your dog to behave and not bark or run around or just stay. Uh, and it can be a bit frustrating. And I know your services are there to help people. Uh, please, can, can you let me know how to get uh, more consistency out of my pup? Absolutely. So thanks very much for having me on today. Um, Basically, when it comes to our dogs and the way that they learn, they're very, very specific in their learning. So they learn, it's almost as if they take a snapshot in time of the elements and the surroundings uh, of what's happening during their learning. So one of the things I hear frequently from our clients is that their dogs are super reliable and really great at home. You know, they ask for a sit and boom, the bum hits the floor. They ask for their downs, their stays, and it goes really, really well at home. And then as soon as they're out on a walk or out visiting friends, or there's maybe people over at the house. So we increase that distraction in the environment. It feels like our dogs either aren't um, listening anymore or that they're just unable to perform these behaviors anymore. It feels like our, all the, the work that we did teaching them these things kind of goes out the window and it can feel frustrating. So I just wanna let people know that that's really, really normal when it comes to dogs. And one of the most difficult parts of dog training or not necessarily difficult in, sense, in that sense, but overlooked um, parts of dog training is teaching our dogs to be reliable around distractions right so if they learn as a snapshot in time and we spend the time to teach them in their least distraction environment which is usually at home which is where you should be teaching them as a starting point but it doesn't end there so we need to help them to generalize their learning which is something that they don't do so usually if a dog is not focusing on their on what's been asked of them it's usually not because they're being stubborn or disobedient. Um, it's usually just because we simply are asking them more than they can do or more than we've taught them. So, you know, working on the sits and the downs and the recalls or whatever, whatever cue that you're working on with your dog, you want to do that in, you know, every room of the house that your dog's allowed in. And then once they've mastered it there, you're going to maybe start in the backyard or start in on the front porch, just as you're leaving to go for a walk and they're a little bit excited, but nothing really too crazy is happening. You know, you have one friend coming over, maybe let your dog settle down a little bit after that um, initial greeting and then ask your dog to do something that you know that they know and see if they're able to do it. So we need to just increase really gradually and build on their success there. Uh, so that's just kind of general dog training. Um, other things that I hear about are, it all, it all ties in, um, but one of the, and it's a bit of a safety concern, this one, is that as soon as there's, you know, an open door, a lot, some of our dogs will see that as an opportunity to bolt. So they're either going out to explore, something's caught their eye, they just, they're excited, and they just see that open front door as an opportunity to go running out. So that as I said, is a bit of a safety concern. So we wanna work on our stays, but again, because they don't generalize, if you teach stays in the living room, that's where their stays will be the most reliable. So if you want your stay to work beside an open front door as you are accepting your pizza delivery, so you have a credit card in one hand, your pizza in the other hand, and you're wrangling the dog to try to make sure they're not escaping out the door, train, trying to train your dog in that moment won't be very successful because that's like really high distraction. There's food involved. There's a stranger at the door. It's very exciting for those dogs who are excited to see strangers at the, do at the door. So taking the time beforehand to work your stays in that environment and then practice really gradually, you know, opening the door just an inch, closing it again. If your dog held that stay, wonderful. Then you're going to build on that success and eventually you'll be able to get up to that point of having them safely able to hold a stay beside the front door that's open. 
You know what? That's uh, some great advice uh, for dog owners. That's for sure. Uh, and from what I'm understanding, it's um, it's more of a question of like you have to be consistent, uh, and it it takes time. You know, you really do have to be patient. And one hundred percent. That's it. And you don't want to get frustrated with uh, with the dog say like, well, come on, how how could you not know this? Why aren't you connecting the dots? You got to exactly. remember their dogs. It's our job to help them connect the dots. right? Exactly. And you also have to remember too a little bit prevention of the behaviors that we don't want because they're really good at learning habits of things. So if every time the door is open, we're not managing that area. So even if you have a home, for example, that doesn't have a double entrance, well, you could get like a little pen or a, a baby game to block off the door so that while you're training your dog, you're still making sure that uh, there's going to be times when you're not training your dog, you're just simply answering the door. And that's fine as well. But if you have a little barricade or a little barrier there, ensuring that your dog isn't able to run out the door, because once they get a taste of that, if they enjoyed it, it's going to become even harder for them to resist next time. So the I prevention see. part of it as well is important. That, that's uh, some great advice. Sam, thank you so much for your time today and sharing this great info. I'm going to encourage everybody with a dog to get in touch with you for a consultation uh, and just to make sure that um, you're able to help them and give them some good advice. And at the end of the day, it's really for our dogs to make sure that they're well balanced, they're happy, they're healthy, uh, behaving and, um, you know, making it an enjoyable experience for everybody. I'll attach all your info here and I'm sure everyone will be excited to get in touch with you. Sam, thanks again so much for uh, joining us today. It's my been my pleasure. Thanks, Paul.